Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me again as we continue our study of the book of Revelation, the book that's about the plans of God that and purposes of God that were once concealed, but now they have been revealed. The veil has been removed like a veil that covers a woman's face. The veil has been removed. The mystery of God's plans and purposes have been removed and have been disclosed to one of God's apostles. And it's a great book. And we're told to honor the book, to hear the book and to heed the book. And when we honor the book of Revelations, hear the book of Revelation, heed the book of Revelation, we are told we would receive a tremendous blessing. Now, yesterday I told you the principle of hermeneutics that are always true. Whenever you're interpreting the Bible, you always ask five questions, always, beginning with the letter A, easy to remember. Who's the author? Who's the audience? What's the alarm? What the answers are? What the application is? Now, let's go through these very quickly. These five or these four of the five when it comes to the book of Revelation. First of all, who is the author? Let's find out who the author is. Look at Revelation chapter one and verses one through three and verse nine, and you will find out who it is. It says, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John. So we know who it is. It's John, it's, it's John. The book of Revelation is written to John who is one of the apostles. And you also read that, look down at it and it says in verse nine, it says, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and the kingdom and patient, and don't forget the word kingdom in the suffering and kingdom, kingdom the kingdom, the basileia theos, the kingdom of God. So the author is the book of John. So John wrote five books in the New Testament. Uh, he wrote the gospel of John, and then he wrote the epistles, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and then he wrote the book of Revelation. Now, he wrote the gospel of John, check this out, the purpose was to convert the sinner. So when you read about the Gospel of John, you know, except a man be born again. There were sinners in the Gospel of John, like the woman at the well and Nicodemus. And he writes the Gospel of John to change people's lives, to convert the sinners. He writes the epistles, first and second and third John. He writes the epistles, John, to confirm the saints. Sometimes we need to be confirmed that we're doing the right thing. So he writes the gospel of John to convert the sinners. He writes the epistles of John to confirm the saints. He writes the book of Revelation to comfort the suffering. He's comforting the suffering, all right? So the author is John. Now, who is the audience? Well, let's look at our scripture again. Revelation chapter one uh, and verses one through four. Uh, remember, it's it's written by John. Uh, and then remember, verse three, remember yesterday we talked about the, 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 that there's a blessing on everyone who reads the book of Revelation, that it, it is supposed to be uh, honored, heard, and heeded. And you know, and then verse three says, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart. Those who heed it, those who hear it and take it to heart uh, means take it to heart uh, means that you're going to live it out. You you honor it, you hear it, you heed it. All right. Uh, he take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. J Greetings and doxology, John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. So now we know who the audience is. The audience is to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Now, what does that mean? The seven churches in the province of Asia are these little churches. Keep on that, skip that scripture. I want you to see this, this scripture up. Those seven churches 
Um, and, and, and we don't know if it was actual seven churches or, if, or you know, the, in the book of Revelation, the, the, the number seven is a very important number. And in fact, while I'm thinking about it right now, there is a code, a number code, a color code, and animal codes that you find all in the book of Revelation. For example, look at the number code in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, there's, and you can uh, take note of this, you can stop stop uh, the, the, this uh, uh, podcast and write this down or take a picture of it. But anytime you see these numbers in the book of Revelation, this is what they mean. For example, one means unity or primacy, the most important. Um, uh, two means confirmation. Anytime you see a two in the book of Revelation, it's confirmation. Three means divinity. Four means God's creation. Uh, five or 10 means full or complete. Six means humanity or evil. 666 is the ultimate evil. Seven is the number of perfection. So anytime you see the number seven, that means that's the perfect or that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's perfection. 12 means organized religion, like the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? They are codes, number codes. Now go back to the verse again, to the seven churches in Asia Minor, which means to all the churches, whether you are one of the specific churches that he's gonna to write to, like the church at Ephesus or Smyrna or Sardis or, or Thyatira or Pergamum or Laodicea or Philadelphia, uh, whether you are one of the seven churches that he's going to write to, or whether you are a member of the church of that era, regardless, this is the revelation, something that has been, that was veiled, unveiled, and Christ has a message for you. So it is written to the churches, please no, it's not written to the churches of Louisville or Chicago or Wisconsin, the first recipients, he's addressing their particular issues, the issues of the seven churches in their culture. So we know who the author is. We know who the audience is. Now, what is the alarm? Look at verse nine again. It says, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and the kingdom. Remember I told you that John wrote the gospel to convert the sinners. John wrote the epistles to confirm the saints. John wrote the book of Revelation to comfort the suffering because the seven churches or Christians were experiencing what's called persecution. Persecution, suffering. These, all Christians were experiencing suffering. And the reason they were experiencing suffering is because and notice in verse nine, the word suffering and kingdom go together because whenever you're trying to live out as the kingdom of God, seek first the kingdom of God. Jesus told us to pray in the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Whenever you're trying to be a kingdom citizen of, 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 of the kingdom of God, you will suffer, especially if you don't compromise because the world is going to try to get you to compromise your values, compromise what you believe, com compromise the, the way you want society and the world to be ordered. So what you have in the book of Revelation, this is the alarm, is you've got a war or a conflict that's going on between the kingdom and the empire the kingdom and the empire. So the kingdom of Jesus Christ and the empire, which is Rome. Remember, he's writing to the seven churches in, in Asia. Well, Rome controlled Asia and Christians were right there in the middle of a world that was controlled by an evil empire. It's called Rome. Now, what makes the book of Revelation timeless is because first of all, those who follow Jesus know what his values are in the first century or in the 21st century. Those who follow empire need to know that the values of empire are true. They're the same in every era. That's true in the first century, true in the 21st century. Now, what is kingdom, kingdom ethics or what do people who follow Jesus believe? We believe in shared wealth. 
You know, when we pray thy kingdom come, we're praying that this gap between the, the haves and the have nots will be closed. Then in the richest country in the world, which is the United States, there's no excuse for there to be homeless people, unemployed people, uh, people who don't have health care, uh, especially when, when, as Martin Luther King Jr. would say, so many people live on an island of poverty amidst an ocean of prosperity that that if you're a kingdom person, you believe that everyone should have daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. That's shared wealth. You also believe in democracy. Democracy. Demos is the is the word, the Greek word for people. Akratos, which is we got word ocracy, is the word power. So democracy is power to the people. The people are self-determining. People get to decide what is in the best interest of their life. And you also believe in peace, that there will be no conflict. Now we want peace, but we don't want we don't want justice. And justice is shared wealth. Justice is democracy, and the consequence of justice is always peace. You can't have peace. You can't have peace, which is the third thing on the kingdom list, if you don't have the first two things that are on the kingdom list. Now, fighting against always the kingdom of God is empire ethics. In fact, you can chase, take the name Domitian out. You can put in Stalin. You can put in Jefferson Davis. You can put in Donald Trump. You can put in any despot who believes the following. If you believe in concentrated wealth, that we should have a system where a, 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 a guy like Jeff Bezos doubles his wealth during the pandemic, doubles it, billions and billions of dollars, he doubled his wealth because of the way the system is structured. Not, all right. And his employees at, at, who work in Amazon.com uh, don't have a living wage. If you believe that that's OK, you are practicing empire ethics. If you believe in hierarchy, which means that some people are on the top make all the decisions and that that the average person has to submit to what the hierarchy wants even when what the hierarchy wants is not in the best interest of the average person, then you believe in empire. And then to keep this in place, you have military strength because whenever you are oppressing people, the oppressed people will always rebel to keep them in their place. You have a police state, you have militarism. In the state of Florida, for example, the governor of Florida signed a, a no quote unquote riot law, which basically suppresses dissent and depress, re, oppresses and suppresses protest and dissent. Well, if that's what you believe in, when, when the governor Santez signed that law in Florida, he was, not, he was practicing empire. The same thing that was going on in the first century goes on in every generation. So guess what's happening? You're having a conflict, a clash, between kingdom and empire. And you always will have a clash between kingdom of empire. That's why we pray thy kingdom come and thy will be done because it's going to dismantle uh, the empire. And remember, John is writing to the seven churches. He's writing to the seven churches who are in the midst of the empire. And if you don't obey what the empire wants, if you don't believe in concentrated wealth, if you don't submit to the hierarchy, if you're not promoting militarism, then you experience persecution and suffering. Those who are practicing Jesus's ethics will be persecuted. That's the reason why John is writing. John is writing to the Christians and telling them to be faithful, which is the fourth A. Remember the fourth A is, is answer. The answer is to be faithful. Faithful. Now, always remember this. So you get author, audience, alarm, answer, stay faithful. Now, what makes the book of Revelation mysterious is that John, remember, he's on the Isle of Patmos. Isle of Patmos is a little prison penal island like Alcatraz in the middle of the Aegean Sea. And he's put there because of the kingdom and for suffering. He's put there because he is being faithful to Jesus Christ against empire. 
He's a part of the kingdom and the empire has put him there because he's teaching people to rebel against the empire. He is like Martin Luther King. He is Nelson Mandela. Uh, it, it, it's apartheid and Nelson Mandela and Steve Biko and those who rebelled against apartheid in South Africa. That's who John is. This is what's going on. Now he's writing to the Christians in Asia, but he knows that if he writes to them in a way that the, the Roman authorities, the, the, the Gestapo can read it, then more Christians will be persecuted. So he writes to them in coded language, which is called cryptic coded language. Now, if I wanted to communicate to you uh, cryptically, uh, you would understand what I'm saying. But let's say if somebody was to pick up our letter 2000 years from now, and they would say, what is he talking about? Well, they wouldn't understand because they don't understand what the codes mean. That's why I gave you the number codes. And there's not only number codes, but there's color codes and animal codes. There's all types of codes in the book of Revelation. We'll look at that in a minute. But let me give you a cryptic. Let me see if you can figure this out. Okay, I'm writing to you, we're being persecuted. And I wrote to you this, I saw an, an older donkey. I wrote this up, I saw an older donkey pass a wealthy elephant, elephant in a 20. The disease went forth around the world. Those who were covered survived the charging elephant. I saw an older donkey pass a wealthy elephant in a 20. The disease went forth around the world. Those who were covered survived the charging elephant. Now, if you think I'm really talking about an elephant, a charging elephant and uh, a, 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 um, a donkey, an old donkey, then you don't you you you're like the empire. You don't understand that I'm not I'm using codes. So let me decode to you the message that I'm trying to send you. Um, here it is. I saw an older donkey. Who's the older donkey I'm talking about? Joe Biden. Why? He's the oldest man to run for president. And he's part of the donkey, and donkey represents Democrat. So I saw an older donkey. I saw Joe Biden, listen to this, pass a wealthy elephant. Now, who's the wealthy elephant? Who's, what's the Republican, what's the symbol of the Republican Party? The elephant. Who's wealthy? Donald Trump. So what is it saying? I saw an older donkey pass a wealthy elephant in a 20. What's a 20? The year 2020, in the year 2020, Joe Biden, who's the older donkey, passed the wealthy elephant who was Trump. And then my second sentence was, the disease went forth around the world. What disease am I talking about? I'm talking about COVID-19. Those who covered, put their mask on, survived the charging elephant, survived the policies of the elephant, which is Donald Trump. That's what the book of Revelation is about. And you understand the book of Revelation only when you know the codes. This would not make sense, what I just said, if you didn't know that a donkey represents a Democrat. What I said will not make sense if you don't know an elephant represents a Republican. You don't know what I, what I said if you don't understand that an election took place in the year 2020. You will now understand what covered means if you don't know that we've been covering our faces to spread, to, to pre uh, pre prevent the spread of COVID-19, that we covered our faces with masks. You have to understand what the codes are. And that's why in the book of Revelation, you have number codes. Let me put those on the screen as we close. You have number codes, number codes. I showed you the number codes. One, two, three, four, five, ten, four, four, ten, five and ten is full of com uh, or complete. Six is humanity, evil. Seven is perfection. 12 is organized religion. So when you read the codes, you just read in there. Let's say if, if I, I see a one, I just read in there either unity or primacy. Don't take the number seriously. Okay. All right. Uh, let's say uh, there's also the color codes. When you see, for example, you want to, want to take a picture of this, the color codes. When you see pale, it means, uh, or pale green, it means death. Dark green, life, white, purity or conquering. Red means warfare. Black means famine. Gold means worth or value. Bronze means strength. Scarlet means sin. Whenever you see these colors, you don't take them literal. Like you didn't take elephant literal. 
These are codes that John is using as he's communicating to the Christians in Asia because they could not be open about what they were talking about because that would cause them to be killed, persecuted, uh, uh, crucified, or on an island, a penal island like John is. So you have number codes, color codes, and then you have animal codes. The animal codes are not the animals are not supposed to be taken literal. He's, when he talks about a frog, he doesn't mean frog. Frog means evil creature. Anytime you see a frog, you're talking about it's something evil. You know, an eagle, I saw an eagle coming. Eagle means bad news. Monster beast, evil forces of persons. Beast from the sea, a symbol of Caesar Domitian. Remember, yeah, I saw a beast from the sea. That's another way of saying, uh, uh, just like saying an elephant. If I say, I saw an elephant come out of the sea, that means I saw Trump. I saw a donkey come out of the sea. I saw Trump. Beast from the sea means Caesar and political power. Sea serpent. The sea serpent is Satan. Locusts represent sin and decay. Seven horned lamb. The seven, the horns in the book of Revelation are always a symbol of power. Anytime you see the horn, the, the word horn, that means power. So a seven horned lamb, remember the number code? Number seven always means perfection. Remember perfection. So if I see a seven horned lamb, I know the horn means power, a seven horned lamb, and Jesus is the lamb of God. That means he's talking about Jesus, the perfect perfect one who has perfect power see domitian who has the empire thinks he has power power but jesus who has the kingdom is the one who has power lion means wild creatures ox means domesticated creatures so this is what the book of revelation this is how it's outlined it's it's a cryptic book uh the author is john the audience is christians who have who are being persecuted by the empire and trying to stay faithful to the kingdom and the alarm the alarm is that uh, that they are being persecuted john is suffering remember i told you the book of revelation is to comfort the suffering remember the epistles are to confirm the saints remember the gospel of john is to convert the sinner all right remember that so you've got the author the audience you've got the alarm you got the answers, and the answer uh, is answers are stay faithful because the seven horned lamb will win. And now, now you tell them, for example, uh, uh, when, when you're in trouble from this point on, uh, you tell your friend, how do you know you're gonna make it? And they'll say the seven horned lamb. <laughs> tell them the seven horned lamb. Start, start using codes to them, seven horned lamb. The seven horned lamb. Maybe we need to have a seven horned lamb conference or the seven horned lamb praise team or seven horned lamb day. You know, uh, get, get them codes in your spirit. Start using some of these, these, these codes. So you got the answer. And then the application, of course, is that in every age where the empire is trying to wipe out the kingdom, the seven horned lamb ultimately wins. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and this study. Bless your people and give us the blessings promised in the book of Revelation as we honor the book and hear the book and heed the book. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with me uh, with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, you do need one. Amen. You need to be baptized. Not because baptism is going to save you, but it's 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 an act of obedience. So you need to be baptized, and we can baptize you digitally. We just you can go in your your we can get you in your bathtub. You go under, all right. So or we can get you in your shower. We, we, we'll we'll we can tape this thing, all right. Make it public. You need to be baptized and walk in obedience. So and become a part of the church, all right. I have never had to. Uh, we've never put on uh, a tape baptism, but one of these days we're going to do it. Uh, because somebody's going to be the first one to be baptized in their baptism, all right, become a part of the church. But anyway, you do need a church home. So contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, New Start at ssclive.org. God bless you. Look, you have a great day. We'll pick up on this tomorrow. Uh, but until then, remember, during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.